All right, guys, let's get rocking and rolling here. I hope everyone's doing well and having a great morning. Um, I'm just going to check a couple of quick things here. Okay. I'm assuming uh, you guys can hear me well, so that's great. We're ready to move forward. Uh, hey, I hope everyone's having a phenomenal week this week. Uh, tomorrow is a holiday in Utah, Pioneer Day. Um, and so uh, I don't even think we're having morning ascent tomorrow. So this is our last day of the week for this. But, boy, I would love for you to throw out there what you're going to accomplish today. So, boy, you've got the chat on here. You're going to be hearing some inspirational thoughts today from a very hard worker. And I would love for you guys to throw out up onto the chat line how many contacts you're going to get, maybe how many hours you're going to prospect. In addition to, if you have any questions that you might have for Trent, or if you have any questions that you want to connect about with me for the end of the meeting or anything like that, let's, let's make it happen. But throw out there what you're going to accomplish today. It's always great to put it out there and, and have some accountability. So next, we are so grateful to have with us today, Mr. Trent Rogers. He, uh, he works in our Orem office. And this guy is uh, one of my favorite people in the company, and I got to know him a lot better uh, earlier this year, uh, working a, a transaction and that he was putting together, and just a great, phenomenal person and agent. So Trent, we are so excited to have you here, uh, ready to share some uh, words of wisdom with this group. So thank you so much for participating today. Oh, you're on mute, Trent. Your phone, your... You're on mute, I think. Can you unmute it, or does Russ need to do that? He can do it. Okay, so you can unmute it. Somewhere on there, there's a mute or audio button. There we go. <laughs> Got it. All right, sweet. Thank you. Trent, thank you so much for being here today. We're pumped to have you, man. Well, thanks for having me. So um, we're going to dive right in. I would just love if you wouldn't mind just share a little bit about – you maybe a little bit about your story and and what got you into real estate how long you've been working and some of those good things okay great well i've been here with everest for about two and a half years um i started in real estate back in 2008 i uh, prior to that i was a general contractor and when the market crashed i decided to diversify i got my real estate license and here i am it kind of stuck and so I uh, haven't been doing any construction now for quite a few years, but uh, have really enjoyed being able to work in real estate and the things that I've been able to learn um, in this job. Cool. Yeah. And so talk to us about what that transition was like, because I know there are agents who would be on this call right now that maybe um, have another career that they want to jump into real estate or have had another career and they want to, what was that transition like for you? What were some of the challenges and what, what worked well for you? I think really for me, there were two transitions that took place. The, the first step that I took into real estate, I worked for kind of a unique brokerage where I was focusing specifically on investors. And my job for the first couple of years was just to go out and buying properties for investor buyers to purchase. And so I really was a buyer's agent and that was all that I did. And I didn't have to prospect or go out and find my own business. Everything was put in my lap. When the market started to change a little bit and the investors started looking out of state for other opportunities, I had to make an adjustment. And that's when I found out about the Mike Ferry coaching system and got into that and started to learn how to go out and create my own business. And that's uh, been a really great uh, growth process for me and something that I still put a lot of time and effort into. And I've been really thankful for the things that I've learned in that process. Heck yeah. So how long have you been uh, coached professionally? So I've been in coaching now for, gosh, six or seven years. Wow. Good. So that's an awesome, I mean, obviously the results there have been, have been great. So um, okay, cool. So let's dive into some of like exactly like some of the things. Cause again, we've got seasoned agents on here. We've got brand new agents on here. Um, did you, did you have like a breakthrough year ever, or do you feel like you've just been steadily climbing or was there one point when it was just like, Whoa, like the floodgates have opened. <laughs> 
Yeah, I definitely feel like there's been significant growth every year. There's always progress, and that's one of the great things about working in the, this profession. There's plenty of opportunity for growth and, and development. I would say about five, well, I think it was 2015. Uh, five, so five years ago, I had a really significant growth year, and I would attribute that to an accountability that I set up that year. I, I really decided that I needed to push my business to, to a point where it could sustain our needs and what we needed with our family. And so I set some accountability in place that was really uncomfortable for me, um, but caused me to grow significantly that year. And it was, it was really uh, made a big impact on me. Okay. Now, is the accountability something you can share with us? Yeah, I'd be happy yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. So, so that year I had a, another agent. The two of us uh, got together and decided that our, our uh, goal every day was to set at least one listing appointment. And so that, that was the minimum standard. We had to set at least one listing appointment. And I think any of us who set that kind of a goal, whether it's one or two or three or whatever it is, but if we go out every day and focus on setting at least one appointment with our prospecting effort, we're going to be really rewarded for that. And I, I was that year. The, the accountability was that if I didn't achieve that, I had to pay him $100. It was kind of funny because we found that sometimes if, uh, if I had a day where I didn't achieve that and I gave him $100, now he had $100 in his pocket that he could give back to me. So he could relax <laughs> a little bit later. We eventually decided that that wasn't working out quite as well as we wanted it to. And so we had to donate $100 to charity for our- There you go our other guy. But anyway, we found some ways to work around some of the things because a lot of times you do, you find a way to let yourself off when there's accountability in place. Oh yeah. But it was a great experience for me. So how many, uh, so I like, like to dive into that a little more. So what, so you were setting like one appointment every day at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, and just for the group, like were they all pretty solid or did you have a few of the Hey, you know, I want to come tour your home and all of that. I'm sure there are some of those mixed in there, right? Yes. Okay. But it, it, it's all about the minimum standards that you set. And yeah. I think a lot of times when you set an accountability and, and you say, okay, this is my minimum standard, you'll, you'll achieve whatever that minimum is. And so, yeah, there were definitely times when the appointments that I set, I was struggling on a certain day and the appointment that I set maybe wasn't all that great, but the effort was there and it kept me motivated and kept me focusing on that. And sometimes I was working later or whatever it was, it caused me to work harder. And by doing that, I was growing. And so even though maybe a hundred percent of those appointments weren't fantastic, the, the effort was there. Well, yeah. And that's, and actually just know I'm asking the question because I believe that you're rewarded so much more for being engaged in the business than it is that you have to have the perfect appointment or whatever. So, you know, when I'm talking to agents and counseling them, I am frequently suggesting even that they're willing to take a group, maybe a small chunk of people that they do kind of those, I'll call them, um, you know, tour, like a showing appointment or whatever it is, just to kind of have a tour of the house. Um, but boy, yeah, I think that's, that's phenomenal because some of those are going to pan out. And then of course you're going to set stronger appointments. Let's talk about this. I mean, throughout that time, you're, you're, you you saw some success. So do you remember how many listings you took that year? I don't remember the number of listings I took that year, but I've, I still have never returned to that transaction count that I had that year. Okay. I've had, I've had years with equal financial um, as far as gross commissions Right. But as far as the uh, number of transactions, I've never returned to that. And how many, how many did you close that year? I think I had 44 that year. Wow. Really neat, man. That's cool. Accountability works. That's so, so cool. Um, talk to us about how you grew as a professional that year, because you were interacting with a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I, I was. And I, I think I gained a lot of confidence for one thing. It, it was an opportunity to get out there and interact with a lot of people. And so you do gain a lot of confidence when you're talking with people. And I think that's one of the key things. We just have to be engaged and talking and interacting, whether you're touring homes or uh, outdoor knocking or on the phones, whatever you decide to do, talking with people is our job. 
And the more you do that, the more confidence you have and the, the more you progress that way. Love it. So your skill sets were improving. You had accountability on the line. And lo and behold, you had more transactions than you've ever had in your life, which is so cool. And yeah. since then, you figured out how to be even more efficient and earn the same amount of commissions, perhaps, with fewer transactions and all that good stuff. But, and we've got, obviously had a great market increase. But um, I guess uh, I'll, from here, you know, as we talk about that, because, you know, you're professionally coached. I, I know you're a hard worker and you are consistent as anybody I know on doing your job every day. When I say doing your job, I'm talking about prospecting. So will you share with us a little bit about your schedule? Um, like what, what is your schedule? What does your routine look like? Um, yeah. Okay. And maybe before we leave this accountability thing, I'll, I'll tell yeah. you about one that I have in place right now. Okay, um, good. I've got a group of, four agents. I, the other three agents are all on the West Coast in, in Pacific time zone. But anyway, the four of us every day are accountable to each other. And we just have a minimum number of contacts that we have each day and a, a, a goal for a number of appointments set. So some for some of them, it's one appointment a week. All of us are having different goals, but we do have to be accountable to that. And okay. again, if we miss those minimum standards, then, then it costs us $100. And so, so you're that's back something that it, continues yeah. to be effective for me. And it worked five years ago. So I'm coming back to that again to continue to push cool. the business forward. Very cool. That's awesome. Now, so as scheduling. far as yeah. schedule goes, um, it, my morning schedule, I've just learned to make that really a high priority for me. And so I work really hard to maintain that schedule and, and stick to it. And so I get up really early in the morning. I, I'm typically up pretty much every morning by 3.30 in the morning. So it's kind of an insane hour. <laughs> I, Holy uh, cow, man. <laughs> now you got to tell us, because I know everyone's wondering, what time do you go to bed at night? It's typically 9, 9, 9.30, somewhere in that range. Okay. So I uh, work hard to get to bed and and then uh, anyway, so my morning schedule is really important. And I, I do typically get up around 3.30. I'll spend usually about an hour with uh, prayer and meditation and study and things like that um, at home. And then I typically spend, depending on the day, an hour and a half to two hours um, uh, running or going to the gym or, you know, coming back and forth and all of that. But there's a, a t pretty significant time block in there for exercise, which I really enjoy. It's a, a major um, benefit to me as far as my mental health as well as my physical health. So that's something that I focus on a lot. Cool. All right. Sweet. And then I try to be into the office somewhere between seven and seven thirty. get ready for prospecting. And then, you know, we've got morning ascent and I, I want to be um, ready to go as soon as we're done with morning ascent to um, get after my prospecting efforts. Okay. And uh, talk to us about your prospecting. So this last Monday, I did the coaching call and I spent the whole time discussing different lead types and all that good stuff. Share with us what, uh, you know, everything in your morning leads up to you getting on the phone and beginning to make calls, you know, out of a, okay, let's say a five day work week. How many days of those weeks are you on the phones? Every day. Because Every if I, day. It cost me a hundred dollars. <laughs> yes. Well, I like to emphasize that, and I know it was a silly question for you because I already knew what the answer was, but I just want to make it clear. Uh, did you see how silly Trent thought that question was? Because, of course, he's on the phones every day because that's his job. So I, I, th I really believe, Trent, that when an agent figures that out, that is such a change in their life and their business. Early in my career, and it was George who was my coach at the time, made the comment to me, it's not a day of work if you haven't prospected. And once I figured that out, it changed my, my life. So tell us about what your prospecting time looks like. How long is it? Who are you calling? What do you do to stay upbeat? Um, and all of that good stuff. Okay. So I typically um, – start off by calling the for sale by owners and expired. So that's the, the new for sale by owners and expired are my first priority in the morning. So I try to get to those as early as I can. And then after that, I spend some time calling uh, the new for rent by owner ads that come up. 
So I'll, I'll call the rental property owners and see if they're looking to buy or sell any properties and, and have conversation with them. Um, from there, I typically will um, either call my SOI or I'll also focus on going back to older leads, maybe old expireds, old for sale by owners, um, old rental property owner uh, ads or leads. And so I'll spend time with all of those categories really. And, and it depends on the volume of calls in each category, you know, how many I'll do. But in general, I'll spend three and a half to four hours every day in my prospecting time. Wow. So, so what would you say, Trent? Um, I want to talk a little bit about those lead types, but I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, there are agents out there that just say, well, they've got a couple deals under contract, maybe. I mean, this is very common. And, and if you're an agent hearing this and you don't like what I'm saying right now, boy, you've got to listen in. This is critical. What would you say to the agent that says, well, I'm so busy. I've got so much going on. I could not spend three or four hours a day prospecting. And you're, gonna, you're closing a ton of business. What would you say to that agent? Uh, to me, it's about, it's about time blocking. You have certain tax tasks that fit in certain parts of the day. And so prospecting for me goes in the morning. And if there's something that just has to come into the morning, I, I resist those things. Even appointments, I resist a morning appointment. If I can put it somewhere else, I push pretty hard to do that. But if there's something that has to come into the morning, like Lindsay taught us the other day, I would just replace that block of time and find a spot in the afternoon when I can re, uh, you know, put forth that same effort uh, towards prospecting. But prospecting is not negotiable. It needs to be done every day. And that's part of the reason that I put the accountability in place. I've noticed that sometimes if, if that accountability isn't there, I sometimes don't have the discipline to stick with it. And so I might say, okay, 20 contacts was good enough today and I didn't get an appointment, but I had other things to focus on. But with that accountability in place, it, it helps me to focus and keep those priorities where I want them to be. That's cool. And actually I can attest to that because earlier this year, um, Trent had reached out to, he was working on a really big project and, um, it, and he wanted to understand how the company could support him through this project. So we're talking about a guy that was, boy, at the time, Trent, he was talking about a hundred plus listings up in Heber and his own personal two different million plus dollar listings and all of that stuff. And guys, I know that at that point, there was a, had to be at some point a suggestion of, I recall, can we meet in the morning? And Trent just kindly saying, I'd prefer if we could do it in the afternoon. Or, you know, he wasn't throwing it off. But I mean, I know as a general statement, most of us agents, I'm talking about myself included, when, when an opportunity like that is at your fingertips, you are going to Forget about prospecting as fast as humanly possible. And this guy's the real deal. I mean, I saw him decline an earlier meeting and ask to postpone it for the afternoon. And here's the beauty of it. He created a great relationship with the seller. He was able to generate the business from this guy, get contract signed, and is working on this project. Uh, it's turned into something a little different, but it's, that's irrelevant. What's more relevant is that he, he was able to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish later in the day and didn't, didn't get rid of his schedule and the prospecting, which he just said is non-negotiable to get there. So kudos to you, Trent. That's huge. I just, I've got to throw that out because people do a lot of talking and I want to make sure that I am verifying, like I have seen you uh, walk the walk, which is very cool. So, um, very, very, very cool. So, okay. So uh, regarding, um, prospecting lead sources and stuff, have you ever had a day where like you show up and you say you're going to call for rent by owner for sale by owner expires and they're just not there. What yes. do you do? What do you do? So I want to come back to this mindset about prospecting before okay. I jump into that. Is that yeah. okay? Um, and whatever. Yeah. One other thought that came to my mind is that my mindset in the afternoon is I've got to get the other things done in the afternoon or the evening so that 
the next morning I can come with a clear mind and not have to be worried about this transaction that needs more attention today. And yeah. so my, my focus is I need to try and get those things accomplished the day before in the e afternoon or the evening so that tomorrow morning I don't have to be trying to negotiate deals or other things. My time is going to be focused on prospecting. And as much as I can, I try to get that done the day before so that I can have a, Good. a better time being able to focus in the morning. So I, I just wanted to make that point. No, that's great. No, I, and your strategy is awesome. So we want to hear all, all that you'll share about that. So, uh, okay, so the leads, you run out of leads or you show up and they're just not there. So one of the nice things, I, I use a, a dialer and so I pay for leads that come in. And one of the things that really helps with that is just having, I, I mean, I've got a database of thousands and thousands of names. We can always go back and call a just listed call or, or make just sold calls. Um, or a lot of times I just go back and find older leads. I just need to be talking with people and there, I have lots of lists on my computer. So all I have to do is say, okay, let's go in and call this list. And um, I, that always works. And then the other thing that's a, a great thing is just make more SOI calls. I mean, that's where my business comes from. As much as I put time into these other categories, 60, 70% of my business comes from my SOI. So that's a great place for me to spend time and in, in just interacting with them. So uh, cool. that's the best place. Do you mind sharing with the group, what does a typical sphere of influence phone call, like what's your opening line to people? Because people get so gun shy for calling a friend or a family member or something for a business purpose. What does that look like for you? I typically just, uh, try to be a little bit more open, especially this year with the, the uh, COVID-19 situation going on. A, a lot of times my call is a, even softer than it normally is. And I'm just reaching out to people and saying, you know, I, I know things have been kind of crazy and different this year. How's it been affecting you? And so I start off really inquiring about them and finding out what their, what their needs might be. And if there's anything that I can do to be a resource for them and, and their needs, most people seem to be doing pretty well, but if you get talking to them, they've, you know, I was talking to one of my past clients from six or seven years ago, just, just a day or two ago, and she's doing fine, but her daughter and son-in-law are without work. And so you're able to ask a little bit about what they're doing and what kind of work they might be looking for. And maybe we can be a resource to help somebody even with an employment situation with these hmm. difficult times. Awesome. So pretty soft opening. And then if a business opportunity prevent presents, I mean, un, it seems to me on, uh, without fail, they're going to say, how are you? How's business? How's real estate? And you're going to have a chance to talk about that. Exactly. Yeah. And really it's about being in contact with them, uh, sending out emails and having mailers, you know, whatever it is that we're doing to stay in touch with people. I had one call me just a few days ago that a guy that I've never really, he's never been a client, just someone for, back from my construction days, really. Um, but I've stayed in touch with him and he, uh, he reached out to me and said, Hey, I've got a lot that I need to sell and I'd like to have you list that for me. And it seemed and felt like it was unsolicited. Somebody just remembered me and called me, but it's because of those efforts that I've made to stay in front of him. I love that. Yeah. So that's the key element. So do you have like a, uh email campaigns that you're sending out to people on a monthly basis then and yeah uh, okay so cool we're sending Great. out newsletters and things like that to just stay in front of people that way yeah and so i just i have to take that chance to make sure that i'm saying to the group here that you have all those tools right within your 21 online um all of the different technologies and tools to do monthly campaigns so make sure you're doing it because that's what creates the opportunity. So, um, Trent, how about you? When you're talking to a seller or a buyer, or you're on the phone and things. Um, what do you feel like separates you from your competition? Like, if someone says, "Hey, why, why choose you, Trent? I've met with five agents. What, what's your mindset there?" Uh, I think one of the things that they may perceive as a difference is. That, that I listen. I'm not someone who's going to pressure them to do something that's uncomfortable. I want to listen to them and understand their needs and 
see if there's a good fit. If it's not a good fit, I'm not going to try and cram it down their throat. I'm, you know, I'll move on and find somebody that's a, that's a good fit. So I, I think the, the biggest thing is I just try to listen to them and I want it to be a win-win situation. I want everybody to be happy. And if, if, uh, if it works out, it works out and we can help one another. That's great. Otherwise I'll just move on and find somebody else. Yeah. Well, look, and, and I can speak to and, and we'll share that when I was having those meetings with you, um, boy, you, I'll say what I find Trent does that separates him from his competition is he's like the consummate professional. He is, he is staying great with his communication with his potential client. And what a great listener Trent is. He's, he just stops and listens to exactly what the person's needs are. And I'm generally a pretty expressive person. So I, I'm interrupting people a lot, unfortunately. Trent is a great listener and he just pauses. I'm surprised that you weren't kicking me under the table, Trent, because I talk too much. But man, great listener, great professional, asking great questions, and then also being very cautious from a standpoint of um, making sure he can deliver upon what he promises. Like, here's a person that I would say uh, would be so uncomfortable over-promising and under-delivering, which unfortunately in our industry is a little bit of a, a plague out there where in order to get, well, sometimes agents will do whatever it takes to get the deal done, including setting the wrong expectations for people. And, and here's a guy that I would say, the integrity level is so high, the professionalism is so high, he wouldn't let that happen. So kudos to you, Trent, on that for sure. Um, I know that definitely is one of the things I've observed that you, you do to separate. Um, so let's talk for just a moment. What would you say to like a brand new agent or someone who's maybe had their license for a while and has not had any type of breakthrough what would you say as advice to them to help them either get their career started or get a jump start in their career? I think skill development is one of the first things that comes to mind. Role playing with other agents is as uncomfortable as that might be. I think role playing is really critical. One of the things that's been most beneficial to me uh, as far as skill development has been concerned has been chanting the scripts and objection handlers um, oh. every morning. And so I actually took a break from that probably for almost a year and have just started back up this month. But I spend 15 minutes every morning reciting um, certain scripts or objection handlers because I know that even though I know the gist of what's in an objection handler, if it's not really top of mind and really fresh in my mind, it's not going to come when the pressure's on. Yeah. And so if I'm reciting those every morning for 15 minutes, they're, they're top of mind. And I'm much more prepared to handle those objections when they come up. Very cool. Wow. So, so just making sure that they've got the skill development in place and uh, all that good stuff. It's huge. So yeah, that, that, and then just making a habit of going out and finding business every day. If you'll do those two things, you're going to make it. It, it. You have to be patient. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but if you develop the skills and then make it a habit every single day to go out and find business, this is a great business to be in. I couldn't agree more. Those are two of the most essential items in that process, finding new people to talk to and being skilled at what you're going to say to them. So that, that is huge. Thank you so much. Um, guys, I'm going to ask Trent maybe just one or two more questions. I know we're running short on time. If you have a question for him, um, feel free to throw it out, um, and, and we will ask. There's some good compliments for you on there, Trent. Um, I guess uh, a couple other things that um, I was going – okay, this was one of the questions I wanted to make sure I asked you because you're busy. You've got accountability. You're very committed to your schedule. Uh, everyone struggles with balance uh, in personal life, professional life. Um, I'm sure you struggle with it from time to time. So I just love to know what, you know, what works for you or what helps in that arena for you to, to balance that out. First of all, I think um, scheduling personal things 
early in the morning to make sure that those things that I don't want to um, allow any flexibility on, they're scheduled in first thing in the morning. So that, that doesn't, uh, doesn't get it in, I guess no, nothing's going to interfere with that. <laughs> yeah. So they're scheduled at a time when I can do that. And then other than that, I think one of the things that I do a probably maybe even too good a job at is we do schedule a lot of uh, recreation. And I would say this time of year, I'm probably gone from home doing something fun with my family and friends three or four weekends a month. I mean, it's, it's almost awesome. every weekend. So we'll, I mean, we'll get away and go to Southern Utah almost every weekend or, you know, go somewhere like that. And so I, I make sure that there's some recreation. We plan it and we stick with our plan and, and make sure that it happens. Okay, cool. All right. Well, Trent, man, it's such an honor to have you uh, as part of Century 21 Everest. Sincerely, um, you are just in my opinion the epitome of a of a great agent a great example of someone that anyone in our industry could look to uh as a great way to to run their business and be a great business person and uh, i'm so grateful that you're willing to participate today you've shared some great insights um and just thank you so much any final thoughts or anything you'd like to share with the group no i think one of the great things about this company is there's there are so many great people to look up to and so many great things to learn from one another. We just got great people here. And so I appreciate the opportunity to rub shoulders with so many great people and learn from one another. And hopefully someone was able to learn a little bit this morning from some of the things we shared. He's humble too, folks. What more could you ask? Trent, well said. Thank you again uh, for all you've done and for being a part of Everest and, and just grateful to associate with you. Uh, guys, if you have any questions or whatever, man, don't hesitate to reach out. Trent, make sure you read the comments. It looks to me like there's a great handful of compliments on there. Um, and thanks again for participating. Guys, we're going to close up with some affirmations here and uh, get out there and, and have an awesome day today. So 